this video we're gonna talk about and test 16 different features you get when you sign up for CapCut Pro so that you can decide based on your needs if it's worth it paying the Pro subscription instead of just keeping the free version. Yeah, I am Manry, and this video is packed with information, so if you're looking for something specific, you can check out the chapters in the timeline. Now, this video is not sponsored by CapCut, so I'm gonna give you my honest opinion if I think a feature is worth it or not that much. Now, one thing that helps me make these videos are my classes on Skillshare, but more on that later. Let's talk about feature number one, and now you've got 100 gigabytes instead of only one in your CapCut space. It's a space in the cloud in which you can upload your projects. This means that you can share projects between devices, meaning if you started editing something on your smartphone and you want to continue on your computer, and you can also share it with other users. Very useful for multi-device users and if you're collaborating with other people. This one is approved. Feature number two might pass unnoticed for a lot of users. Now in the middle of the screen, there's this button called remove filler words, but actually it does much more than that. As soon as you select a clip and you go to this button, it's going to analyze all the dialogue and it's gonna show you in a graphical representation, but also on a list if there are any repeated words, repeated sentences, if there are any gaps in the dialogue, and you can go through the list, analyze if it's done it correctly, select which parts you really want to delete or you wanna keep. You can also adjust using these handles down here to perfect timing, and literally in just a couple of minutes you can get a whole talking head video chopped down. This one is pretty impressive, so approved. Feature number three is called AI Clip Shorts, and it's meant for people who make long form content and want to post smaller things for Reels, TikToks, or YouTube Shorts. Basically, it kinda works, but it doesn't understand the complete dialogue to make each short really live on its own. For example, I tried with this own video, which is kinda list-based, so each one of these features could be a short, and this is what happened. Feature number four is auto captions, and you're gonna tell me that this already exists in the free version, and you could be right, but there's one extra feature in the pro version, which means that you can automatically which means that you can automatically translate the captions into another language. So let's say, for example, that you've recorded a video speaking in English, but you also want this video to be accessible to people who speak Portuguese. And you can choose to show whichever you prefer or both of them. It gets a little bit confusing on screen. I don't see that something people should really use, but I understand that there might be cases in which it's useful. So this one is a draw. Feature number five is all the extra stickers, transitions, effects, filters, everything that you get extra from what you have on the free version. And this is something that, especially if you've been using CapCut for some time, you notice that each time there are more of the pro and less of the free ones. It doesn't really mean that the pro ones are the best ones, but you do get a lot more choice. So for this one, if you fancy some variety and having a little bit more choice for your edits, it's a huge plus. Ha, I got two bonus features for you, and this one's related to audio. There's a feature called Enhanced Voice and one called Vocal Isolation. Enhanced Voice takes away popping, clicking, some echo, and it works quite well. Now, just a quick break to tell you about my free CapCut editing class on Skillshare. Using the link in the description, you can have access to the platform for a whole month, including my CapCut class. It does make your voice sound a little bit different, but it improves in many cases. But vocal isolation is, I digitally added an aircon and street noise into this footage and used vocal isolation to make it sound like this. It's a 90 minutes class, very well organized in different lessons, in which you learn all the basics of editing with CapCut for that. And some frequencies escape here and there, but really, if you had that original footage, this is a miracle. So. Back to you. By the end, there's a whole lesson in which I added a short video from scratch. And this video I edited and posted as a YouTube short got more than half a million views. So if you wanna see how I did it, head over there and sign up. It's really free. Back to the video. And our sixth feature and the first one over there is the auto adjust, which I'll tell you already is a huge no. I don't know if the problem are the clips I've been trying, the way I've been recording, I don't know. But none of the clips I've used made something that was even useful. Wait, 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 I'm Henry the editor. And while editing this, I noticed that some footage actually worked quite well with the auto adjust. It's a bit of a hit and miss, but it helps with some quick fixes. So actually it's okay. However, feature number seven is related to it and are the color wheels. And this is something that if you're minimally interested in color correcting or color grading your footage, you just need it. And CapCut not only delivers the primaries wheels, but also the log wheels. And if you don't know what that is, let me show you. Here you can see the difference by increasing the brightness of the shadows 
in the primary wheels and also in the log wheels. It's massive. They just understand all of the levels of brightness and colors that are present within the file so that you can adjust it perfectly. So this one, if you're shooting with a camera, I think it's a huge must have. If you're only shooting with your smart, it would be just a bonus. For me, it's a big yes. Feature number eight is enhanced image. And this one is meant to increase the resolution of a file. So I went in really hopeful to use enhanced image to be able to transform some of my old footage into some shorts. But the result was like this. Looks like it manages to make it bigger, but not sharp enough to make it even usable. So this one for me is a no. Feature number nine is reduce image noise. If you happen to shoot something with a very high ISO and you have a lot of grain, you can try to use this feature to reduce it a little bit. It does help with some footage that was otherwise unusable to make it look at least clean, although soft. Ideally, reshoot and use some lights. If you can't, this can help. Feature number 10 is called Relight. And this one, I was pretty sure it wasn't going to work. And I have to admit that I was quite surprised. Here the idea is that you can completely relight a scene using these fake lights. And basically what it's doing is an overlay of colors on top of what it understands to be the subject and the background. You don't have much control about the depth, but the mixing of colors works. And if you just want to add a little bit of pop to the background, it works quite well. Now the relight on the subject was the one that impressed me the most. What it looks like is that it does understand the shape of the face and illuminates it just like a real light would do in a studio. There are only specific cases in which it's going to work well, but if it does, it's really cool. So I could be in the middle, but I'm more towards the approved. Feature number 11, auto reframe. This feature allows you to shoot in one orientation and reframe it into another. It could be square, three by four or vertical. It's perfect if you're doing short vertical clips from longer horizontal content. You don't have much control about who or what is the subject in the scene, but it does a pretty good job in figuring it out. Like this clip, for example, in which it just follows my photographer friend Nico around the streets of Genova perfectly. Now, when I tried this in another clip of me playing tennis with my other YouTuber friend Emanuele, it didn't work quite well. The software kind of gets confused about who is the subject and where exactly should it start tracking it. So I see it as a very good feature, but I couldn't trust it most of the time. So here, I'm gonna keep it as a draw. Feature number 12 is remove flickering. And this is an effect you're gonna get a lot when you're shooting environments in which the lights are not meant for video. CapCut could make it better in some situations, but in others, not really. And in none of them, it really solved the issue. For now, it won't justify you paying the subscription. Feature number 13, and we're getting to the end of the list, is called AI movement. This one is to give a little bit of camera movement to a somewhat static shot. Maybe you have the subject doing something interesting, but the camera, not really. So you can choose some of these options to make a fluid camera movement. It is interesting, but I don't see myself using it. So for me, it's a no. But let me know in the comments if you have any kind of specific use that this would be really good. Feature 14 is camera tracking. Now this clashes directly with the auto reframe feature, but the camera tracking has some extra options that make it very interesting. You can track the head, the body, or the hand of a subject. And it is going to try to keep it in the center most of the time. Again, you don't have the fine control that some other softwares have of choosing exactly which frame to start and which ones you've tracked already. CapCut tries to make it easy for the user, so even if it doesn't find a subject in the first few frames, it just goes forward. And then if it finds something, it's gonna track forward and also backwards. So you can see in this shot here, for example, it didn't find anything in the first few seconds, but then it started tracking her and then it tracked also for the beginning. Now this one works pretty well and makes a very interesting effect. So even if sometimes it creates a weird camera movement, I think this one is a yes. Number 15 is a very useful feature and is stabilization. Now I've compared CapCut stabilization to DaVinci's and Premiere's. And basically CapCut and DaVinci are super fast to stabilize and their stabilization is very similar. In this shot here, for example, I wasn't using any in-body stabilization. And this is the result. In some areas, it gets a little bit wobbly. There's this jelly effect. But for most of it, it worked pretty well. The final result on Premiere was also pretty good apart from some areas, but it took 10 times longer. So for most part of my test, the stabilization was pretty good. So this one for me is a yes. Feature number 16 and the last one in our list is blur. And the scenario that I found that this feature was most useful was to create a motion blur in shots that didn't have because of using a high shutter speed. Let me show you an example. In these shots, you can see the difference between a shutter of a 1 50th of a second and one millisecond. And now the third one is the higher shutter, but applying the blur effect inside CapCut. So if you're shooting outside and you had no ND filter, for example, with you, you could just use this trick to make all the footage look alike. 
Or if you just want to be creative and you have some seagulls, you can just apply the maximum blur and it looks pretty cool. Let me know in the comment section below which features you think are the most useful ones in CapCut Pro. And since you're here, there's a lot more interesting content in the channel for you to watch, like this video over here that YouTube is recommending you right now. So go check it out. I'll see you over there. Bye and thanks for watching. Ciao, ciao.